Next, what are the complications of SCI, spinal cord injury? So you have the limitations, you have seen the limitations. Now moving on to the complications, because once the patient is uh, you know, acutely stabilized, if the rehabilitation part is not started from day one, there can be a lot of complications, which we'll see now. One of the most important complication is autonomic dysreflexia. So what happens in that? Uh, this happens because of the triggers like noxious stimulus, mostly like distended bowel, bladder, kink, kink uh, the kink tubes, police catheter, or you know a new pressure ulcer which is forming, or new ingrowing toenails. These all are triggers which causes autonomic dysreflexia. What happens in this is there is sudden increase in blood pressure. It is seen in individuals with SCI, spinal cord injury, at or above the T6 level. But it, ha it has been seen that it occurs up to T8 level. So documentation has been till T8 level, but the book says it occurs at or above the T6 level. So what happens in this? What symptoms do you get? In this diagram, we are showing that uh, properly. There is heavy sweating. You can see the heartbeat throbbing. The BP rises. So heavy sweating, severe headache, reddened skin, blurred vision, body hair standing, cardiac arrhythmias. So all this can occur. Why this is important? Because sudden rise in blood pressure, it can lead on to, you know, uh, micro vessels ruptured out and all, and you get you can get stroke. So this is very important to be managed. And this is one of the important uh, uh, emergencies in physiatry or rehabilitation. So how do you manage such patients? You first notice the signs and symptoms of autonomic dysreflexia. In fact, it is said that anything about 20 to 40 mm higher than the baseline, the spinal cord injured patients all, uh, already has a normal baseline, which is less than the normal. That is 140 by 80, which is the normal in uh, usual patients. They have already less than that. So uh, once you note the baseline, if there is any time higher uh, uh, rise in the BP by 20 or 40 millimeters than the normal, then you start uh, acting upon it because it can, be, it can be a sign of autonomic dysreflexia. So initial steps are make the patient set up or in the proper position, Loosen all the clothings, first of all. Okay. Patient should not be kept in the light down position. He should be set up and all the clothes should be loosened up. Then just try to find out quickly if you can find out the cause. So causes can be, as we said, that there can be, you know, catheter blockage or it can be some, you know, uh, uh, noxious stimuli like uh, patient has passed, ha had some hard stools, picolits and all. Or it can be some new pressure ulcer which has formed and suddenly it is causing this thing. So just find out quickly. And if there is a, the most common thing is usually catheter issues. So if the patient has catheter, just check, uh, empty the bag. If it is not empty, note the volume, check the tubing if there is no kinking or blockage. If the catheter is blocked, remove and recatheterize, use lubricant uh, containing lidocaine. If the patient is not having catheter and the bladder is distended, in, quickly insert a uh, uh, police catheter using the lubricant containing lidocaine. Now, if the bladder distension is excluded, means the bladder is not the cause, examine PR, do a PR for rectal examination. For that, if uh, you might find a fecal mass in the rectum. So close, uh, gently using a glove finger when you're doing a PR, remove the fecal mass. So after remove the fecal mass, the, fecal mass, the, the BP should subside down. Suppose the symptoms do persist, this should be done, you know, the entire thing should be done within a few minutes. And the BP, if it is seen to rise persistently, more than 160, just start. Start some medicines like uh, most common is nifedipin. Okay, now, nifedipin can be given sublingually or glycerin trinitride is there. But glycerin trinitride is not commonly found in India. So we use nifedipin. And uh, if the symptoms do persist, even after that, what you can do is you can go for other hypertensive, IV hypertensives like hydralazine or uh, you can shift the patient to emergency department and they will take care of it.